Hi everyone, welcome back to yet another session here at Pulse. Today we're in conversation with Nadini Sahabandhu. Now, if you haven't heard of her already, you might want to watch the rest of this interview because we're about to catch up with this absolutely trailblazing individual. Backed with almost 12 years of multidisciplinary experience in the information technology industry, Nadini recently won the Global Awards for Achievement at Tech Women 100 2021. This was organized by We Are Tech Women and Goldman Sachs. Here to tell us a bit about her experience and share a bit of advice on her success story is Nadini herself. Hi Nadini, how are you doing today? Very good, thank yeah. you very much Sarandi for having me. Super. So let's start off by talking about your humble beginnings and what you're currently doing right now. Of course. Um, so I'll start a little bit from my childhood itself. Um, I was born to a middle class family. My father worked in the te as a telecommunications engineer. My mom worked at um, NITA. She is someone who's very passionate about helping people. Um, and yes, yeah, so I have a sister who is six years older. So we grew up, I went to Visaka, uh, studied there from grade one to 13. Right. Um, did a lot of sports. I wasn't one who was very much focused on studies, but then somehow got through well. Okay. Um, and then uh, I started studying um, IT okay. at APIT just right. two days after doing my A-levels. Oh, I decided wow. to go and um, you know attempt it. That's ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I wanted to do something else yeah. though, but then um, I wanted to do the fashion designing, but then I was good at IT, so I thought, okay, why not? Okay. I mean, since right. the opportunity is okay. there. Right. So I went for that, and then after, after about a year, uh, my mom had already applied for local university, Columbia University, right. for me. And then, you know, it takes about a year uh, to, to start get everything right. off. Yes, yeah. So after that, um, I stopped at it. Uh, I've completed my diploma there and then I stopped at it and um, continued my education at the Columbia University uh, at UCSC. So from there, um, we, you know, we are placed for internship. Um, I went through so many different types of, uh, you know, in, into different areas in IT. I started from procurement, then went into consulting, uh, then business analysis, marketing. I was someone who wanted to, you know, pursue different things, take right. up different opportunities. So from what age did you start from? I think around 20, probably. Okay, right. Yeah, so the usual years that would take, I guess, uh, to complete the degree and then to did a couple of different right. things and not into IT, but then decided, okay, I'm, I've completed my studies. I'm going to go into this industry and see what it's like. Um, so yeah, started with procurement, going, went into so many different areas, not just uh, business consulting or, right. uh, you know, not programming, not at all. Right. Uh, but then I figured out my passion was more toward bus uh, towards business consulting and product right. management. So that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. I, um, right. Even though that's my background, mm -hmm. I currently work at Mitra Innovation okay. as a uh, regional lead as well as a senior client services manager. So on a dual uh, dual role at the moment. Right. Okay. Um, that's why I'm working now. Right. Very very impressive. So what made you decide to go into the tech industry? If it's Surely by accident. Um, I wanted to be a fashion designer, but then, you know, I started my studies. So um, eventually I got into the IT industry, but um, I didn't really want to go into programming. Right. I was really good with programming. I did a lot of certifications and um, projects and stuff while in university, but right. I didn't want to go into the industry as a pro programmer. Okay. Rather, I went into uh, like IT procurement for my internship and then into consulting uh, with EY. Um, so, you know, eventually, uh, I wasn't someone who wanted to just settle in one role. So I had a goal for myself every year. I would try something new. Right, okay. So from, you know, with that um, kind of mindset, I went into so many different areas in IT, of course, not programming, but um, it's always good though to have like, you know, that experience in different avenues as well. Yes, it actually gave me a lot of visibility as to how an IT business works. Right. Uh, how software services exactly. works, right? Exactly, right. So I, I thought that that is probably, you know, what gives me the base right now to be running the role I am, right. um, I'm doing with Mitra. Um, especially because I kind of understand what each of those silos mean and how they work together. Right. So tell me a bit about why it's important, especially for youngsters as well, to enter the IT industry, especially um, at this time and age. Sure. Um, so I think IT right now, like over the last year especially, there's a huge uh, spike in the IT skills that's required, not just in Sri Lanka, but all around the world. Um, and if you look at the IT industry in terms of gender comparisons, right, um, there's probably about like 20 to 25 percent women who's working in IT compared to men. Right. Um, but 
We always think that it's something, you know, so difficult to understand. Um, technology side of things, we think that, you know, um, for someone to learn, it's very difficult, but it's not really the case. And you don't really need to know how to code or how to program. Um, all you need to understand is, you know, is there a, is there a gap? Is there a, a challenge that you're trying to, uh, you see that's not fulfilled or not uh, matched up? Um, and is there a solution that you can come up with? Um, there are so many different, um, you know, technologies out there where you don't really need to code. Right. We call them low-code and no-code solutions now in, uh, nowadays. Oh, right, okay. So, you know, you don't really need that rocket science. We sometimes, you know, okay. we sometimes refer to it yeah. uh, that we used to. But it's not really the case and um, you just need to be able to understand what those opportunities are that's out there. So are you saying it's not really rocket science? It's not, it def <laughs> definitely okay. isn't. So on to the big news. Tell me, how does it feel like knowing that you're the only Sri Lankan, the first Sri Lankan rather, to win a global award as prestigious as this one? Um, so Techman 100 um, has, I think it has been there for like six, seven years so far. And they recognize women who have been contributing to tech as well as other supporters who have been contributing to um, the tech industry. Right. Um, knowing that, you know, it's it's a very prestigious award. Um, it's, it's been going on for a couple of months now. So when I heard the news yesterday about me winning it, um, it was, I couldn't really, you yeah. know, it, it took a little time to stick it in. But um, I'm really happy that um, this has, you know, I've, I've won this and I'm really thankful for um, Digital Breakers for nominating me for the award in the first place. Uh, and then all the support I've got so far from um, friends and family, uh, everyone who's been, you know, who's been supporting me throughout. Right. Okay, that's amazing. Congratulations, by the way. I'm super proud of you. Thank you. So, um, moving forward, tell me a bit about your success story and also what your secret to success is rather so um i think uh, there's this saying right um the you're basically the average of the five people that you associate the most 100 percent. yes i think for me it has always been you know family very much revolving around family um so my father is a very techy person from him i think i took the quality of you know, always trying to figure, being very curious and always trying to figure out, um, you know, uh, gathering knowledge and figuring out solutions. Uh, and from my mother wanting to help other people out. Um, so, you know, um, and that took me into going into mentoring and, um, you know, knowledge sharing and things like that. And I think that supported me quite a bit to win this award exactly. as well. Um, and then, of course, my sister, who is always, you know, someone that I always looked up to. Because uh, she was always the best in everything that she does. Oh, right. So I had was to. Was she like a golden me. child of the oh, family? Oh, yeah, she oh, was. Right. <laughs> so I think I had them to look up to uh, all the time. And then, you know, um, there are certain, um, some of my uncles and friends who always kept me going, you know, different stages in life. Right. Um, so I fully uh, am with that statement of saying, you know, that you're the average of those five people. And they're the ones who got me, um, you know, motivated at right. certain points. Uh, and kept, you know, um, kept helping me to think beyond what I can, you know, right. uh, what I've been achieving. Okay. So, yeah, right. very that's grateful very, for them. Yeah, that's very interesting. So tell me, what future plans are in store for you? Uh, I've been telling you about mentoring and knowledge sharing. Uh, that's a big part of what I am now. Um, that's something I believe in. Knowledge is something I really believe in that gives you power. Right. Um, so, you know, I want to be continuing that journey. I'm part of SASCOM um, um, at the moment. Um, called a forum called Product and Platform Council uh, and we are doing a lot of things to make sure that you know um, we share knowledge with others on right. the space of product management that's so important marketing. indeed indeed um, and I think that's the part that I want to go in mentoring not just uh, over here but I'm also involved in a few uh, forums outside of Sri Lanka right okay uh, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna continue that journey and I would like everyone to you know um, contribute to that as well because like I said knowledge is power exactly exactly so that's very interesting and one last question before we leave what message or what piece of advice rather do you have for the youngsters out there who are probably you know looking into starting off a career in the tech industry as well specifically women as well so the advice that i want to give you is take every opportunity that you get especially if you feel challenged by it because if you don't try it you will never know whether you can do it or not um, and that has been my journey so far as well even if I, if I didn't think that I could do it, I would still take it up and try it out. 
and when you're um, at the start of your career, you can always make make mistakes and you know always learn from it, and that's the way to go. All right, so I think that's very interesting as well. But at the same time, I don't think it really applies only to the IT industry. I also feel like it's very important. Um, regardless of which industry you're in to really push yourself and be a better version of yourself and really get out of your comfort zone to grow as an individual. So that being said, thank you so much Nadini for taking the time off your absolutely hectic schedule. I'm pretty sure you're super busy as well um, and for being here with us and we're super proud of you and we wish you all the very best in all your future endeavors. Thank you very much Sarindeep for having me.